We're asked to determine the limit using L'Hopital's rule. Let's first check the form of the limit. As x approaches zero from the right, four divided by x approaches infinity. And as x approaches zero from the right, four divided by sine x also approaches infinity. Right now the limit is in the form of infinity minus infinity, which is an indeterminate form, but it is not one of the indeterminate forms where we can apply L'Hopital's rule. To apply L'Hopital's rule, we need to have the limit in one of these indeterminate forms here in fractioned form. If we have one of these forms, then L'Hopital's rule states the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x equals the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. So just because we don't have one of the correct indeterminate forms for L'Hopital's rule, it doesn't mean we can't use L'Hopital's rule, it just means we have to change the form of the original function. So in this case, let's try determining the difference of four divided by x and four divided by sine x. And let's work this out below. We have four divided by x minus four divided by sine x. To find the difference, we need to obtain the least common denominator, which is the product of the two denominators, or x sine x. And therefore, to find the difference, we need to multiply the numerator and denominator of four over x by sine x. And we need to multiply the numerator and denominator of four over sine x by x. Notice now we do have a common denominator of x sine x. And the numerator is now four sine x minus four x. Which means the given limit is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of four sine x minus four x divided by x sine x. And now let's check the form of this limit. As x approaches zero from the right, four sine x minus four x approaches zero minus zero or zero. And as x approaches zero from the right, x times sine x approaches zero times zero which is also a zero. So notice, by determining the difference, we now have a limit in one of the indeterminate forms where we can apply L'Hopital's rule to help us determine the limit. Applying L'Hopital's rule, this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the derivative of four sine x minus four x divided by the derivative of x sine x. The derivative of four sine x is equal to four cosine x minus the derivative of four x, which is equal to four. And now we divide by the derivative of x sine x, which requires the product rule, where we have the first function of x times the derivative of the second function, which is the derivative of sine x, which gives us cosine x, and then plus the second function of sine x times the derivative of the first function, and the derivative of x is equal to one. And now let's check the form of this limit. As x approaches zero from the right, four times cosine x approaches four times one, or four, and then we have minus four. The numerator approaches zero. In the denominator, as x approaches zero from the right, x times cosine x approaches zero times cosine zero, or zero times one, which is zero. And as x approaches zero from the right, sine x also approaches zero. The limit is still in the form of zero divided by zero, which means we can apply L'Hopital's rule again. So this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the derivative of four cosine x minus four divided by the derivative of x cosine x plus sine x. The derivative of four cosine x is equal to four times negative sine x or negative four sine x and then minus the derivative of four which is equal to zero and now in the denominator to differentiate x times cosine x, we need to apply the product rule, where we have the first function of x times the derivative of the second function, and the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x. And then we have plus the second function of cosine x times the derivative of the first function, and the derivative of x is equal to one. And then we have plus the derivative of sine x, which is equal to cosine x.
And now because we have cosine x plus cosine x in the denominator, I think we can now determine the limit by performing direct substitution. Let's go ahead and try. As x approaches zero from the right, negative four times sine x approaches negative four times zero. In the denominator, as x approaches zero from the right, x times negative sine x approaches zero times zero or zero. And then we have plus, as x approaches zero from the right, cosine x approaches one here as well as here, giving us one plus one. Simplifying, we have zero divided by two, which is equal to zero. So after all that work, we now know the original limit is equal to zero. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. So here's the graph of the original function, f of x equals four divided by x minus four divided by sine x. And notice as we approach x equals zero from the right or positive side, we can see we are approaching the y value or function value of zero, verifying our limit. I hope you found this helpful.